In this video, I'll be attempting to capture a long exposure photo of a model rocket launch. Now, as you can tell by the title of this video, this will be my second attempt at this project. I uploaded a video several months ago detailing my first attempt, so if you'd like some more context, I recommend you also watch that video. My first attempt was by no means a failure either. Here's the final long exposure photo we captured after three launch attempts. And as you can see, it was exactly the effect we were after, where the trail of the rocket is clearly visible as a striking streak of light. I mentioned at the end of that video that I was keen to try it again at a greater distance to capture more of the rocket's flight. So that's the purpose of this video. But it's probably worth running through the essence of long exposure rocket photography in the first place. This form of rocket photography is extremely common for orbital class rockets, and rightfully so. The idea behind a long exposure photo in general is to be able to capture something that is in motion in a single photo. To achieve this, the shutter of the camera is left open for an extended period of time, which allows the camera to capture all of the light information for the desired amount of time. This leads to the case in rocketry where the bright exhaust of the rocket becomes a gorgeous streak of light across the sky, giving you full context of the rocket's trajectory. I highly recommend you go through the catalogues of photographers such as Trevor Mormon or Eric Kuna that really showcase this art in all its glory. Now, there are consequences and considerations when it comes to long exposure, and it's in the name. The camera lens is left exposed to light for a lot longer than a regular photo, meaning much more light is entered into the camera. And if you were to take a regular photo in broad daylight, the image will turn out to be an unsalvageable, overexposed mess. It's for this reason that it's critical that these photos be taken in darker conditions. Not only does this mean the photo is less likely to be overexposed, but it also allows the exhaust of the rocket to be much more bright and visible, and it would contrast much nicer against a darker sky. So that's the basics behind what it takes to capture a long exposure photo of a rocket launch. With this in mind, we selected the only day in the coming weeks with reasonable winds and clear skies, and chose sunset for the launch time. Sunset conditions would give us the all-important darkness, but also still provide enough light that we can still safely operate and recover the rocket. Night launches were still not possible since the rocket was not equipped with any light source or sound beacon for recovery in the pitch black. The rocket in question is the Aerial Hopper Mark I, flying on an Estes B64, which has somehow become my workhorse rocket for science experiments and projects since it's proven reliable and doesn't go too high with a 70 meter average apogee on this motor. And with that, it was time for the first launch attempt. I'm faster than the wind When you're at the door I got it! And I can't let you go <laughs> Continuity test Okay, continuity test Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. False start. So yeah, the rocket didn't launch. At first I couldn't know exactly where the source of the problem was, so my first instinct was to just swap out the old igniter for a new one. Going in. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. But again, the motor wouldn't ignite. And at this point, things are getting a little more stressful since I was racing against the sunset to get the rocket in the air. So once again, I swapped out the igniter. Just had two false starts. Pretty annoying. Hopefully ignition works properly this time. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. Ignition. 
Nada. Nothing. Oh no! What can we do about that? And for a third time, the rocket stayed on the pad. At this point, I figured out that the problem was my launch controller. For context, I used the GoBox launch controller from Pratt Hobbies, which hooks up to an external 12 volt battery, which had enough juice in it to indicate good continuity, but just so happened to die at the most inconvenient time with one of the most time sensitive launches. But luckily, I always came prepared with a backup controller, which was a standard 6 volt Estes launch controller, which I had to frantically untangle in a rush. But with it all hooked up, it was time to try for another attempt. At this point, we also decided to add two ND filters to the camera, which essentially reduces the amount of light getting through to the lens, darkening the image, but also subsequently allowing us to increase the exposure time without messing with the ISO. So we got an ND8 and this is an ND4. So if they were to spec, that, oh god, there we go. ND4 stacked on top of an ND8. So we'll try a 3 cent second exposure, no vignetting, it's very noisy though. It's doing denoising stuff. Okay, there, ooh, that's our 3 second exposure, that's I looking we can push, really dark. We can push 5 seconds we on can, that. If we push it to 5, here we go, you ready? 5. That only reckons it's a tiny bit overexposed. Reveal. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. I reckon we'll do that then. We probably don't even need to stack ND filters then. Uh, I think we it's we can go now. So with the ND filter on, this is how bright it is with a two second exposure. And with the ND filter off, that's how bright it is with a two second exposure. You can't really tell in the phone recording. You might have no, to but it, it's you might it's you a might lot have to better. Overlay them. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Ignition. I might have started this a bit early, so let's see how this turned out. It's going to be flipped. Oh, I don't know if it's there. I don't think so. I don't think so. I definitely started it early enough. Huh. You can't, just can't see Oh, anything. it's like too late. It can't have been too late. I triggered it so early. I can see me pointing my phone up to the rocket. Because it would have gathered the last part of you. Yeah. Okay, uh, what was the problem there? I'm not sure you get in there. When I triggered the shot. Here it is. I think we're gonna have to try another attempt. We probably have to get set up quickly then. The rocket's in good shape. We'll go quickly recycle for another flight. Reusable rockets, that's why we do them. All right. So, as you could tell, the results from the first launch were not ideal. Somehow the trail of the rocket's exhaust was completely missed, which indicates a timing issue, but it was difficult to pinpoint. But with the sun in no rush to stop setting, we went for one more attempt. Second attempt. Five, four, three, two, one, ignition. <laughs> I can't 
completely lost that. Couldn't see it with my eyes. Moment of truth, it's a bit too dark to do any other launch attempts, so if this doesn't work, then that's sort of it for this attempt. So we'll give it a shot. We'll see Hopefully. if we have the shot. All right, do you want to tilt it again? Oh yeah. So is it, yeah, it's done. Yeah, okay. All right, we'll see. The grand reveal. Wait, let me turn it on. Okay, the grand reveal. Three, two, one. Oh, it's there, there. it's there, it's, it's there. there. It's just super faint, okay. I think we can edit that. Yeah, look at the, ooh. Okay, that's, that looks good. Uh, it looks even better. That looks good. Okay, I think we got so, it. So, as you could tell, things were much more successful for the second attempt. And this is the final image captured for that night. Here, you can see the entire one second burn of the rocket motor as a long, bright streak, as well as me recording at the bottom. I believe this photo came out amazing, and along with the close-up shot of my first attempt, which in itself has a brighter and wider exhaust trail, I think this is an excellent little catalogue of what's possible with long exposure photography in model rocketry. Just for those interested, the camera we used was a Nikon D3300, and the exposure time for the final photo was 2.5 seconds. And of course, huge thank you to Remy, who was the photographer for this attempt. Also huge thanks to Isabel, who was the photographer for the original project and both used their skills and equipment for these excellent photos. And thank you for watching this video. The channel recently hit 1,000 subscribers and I couldn't be more grateful. I'd love to hear if you'd like to see more of this content in the future. And if you're not already subscribed, consider joining and don't miss out on future Rocket videos. Until next time, see ya.